Central African Republic is a country which no one talks about. And then below the map, Syria is included. This country, since its independence, has known a succession of state strikes, a succession of military mutinies. This state controls barely its territory and not at all its outside frontiers provocating so a humanitarian disaster. Well, we will try today to understand why. The Central African Republic, as its name says, is at the heart of the African continent. Affected by multiple climatic zones, which we can see clearly on the map, three of those zones getting through the country. At the north we find a tropical climate, so a vegetation of dry savanna. In the center, the wet tropical climate favorizes the development of an aerated savanna. And at the extreme south, the equatorial climate allows the presence of a dense forest. Let's get closer to this country. The Central African Republic is rich in water. It disposes of a vast hydrographic network, which favorizes fishing and agriculture on nearly the entirety of the territory. Wood is exploited in the south. The country also disposes of mining, mining resources such as gold, copper, iron, uranium and mostly diamonds as when we mention the resources of Central Africa, it is mostly the diamonds that keep the attention. If we follow our country sheet on the administrative map, the state is divided in 70 prefectures. French and Sango are the two official languages, even if we count 60 other languages. And the capital is Bangui, at the south of the country, on the west bank of the Ubangi River, just at the side of Congo Kinshasa. Continuing, so who are the neighbors? The country is surrounded by Congo Kinshasa, Congo Brazzaville, Cameroon, Chad, Sudan, and the only new state of South Sudan. The country is by so landlocked, and because of this, the CIR has often been seen by its neighbors as a sort of extension of the margin of the states, leaving the control of its frontiers completely uncertain. A small historical reminder would help us to understand the reasons. Most of the population we live today in the CIR have established there in the second half of the 18th century, escaping the violences of the Arab traders traders of slaves. In the 19th century, those populations will be direct victims to, of, of the slave trade, notably in the Banda country, confronted to, to the Arab expedition of Bar el Hassal. To those slave expedition succeed those of colonialism, as after the discovery of Rubangi by Belgian explorers in, 19, in 1884, the territories on both sides of the, of the river are shared between Belgian and French. In 1889, the French established a first post at Bangui and administered the region, which then takes the name of Ubangi-Chari. Ubangi-Chari becomes a French colony in 1903. Then it is attached to, the, to French Equatorial Africa in 1910, a sort of federation grouping some French colonies in the region. Sanitary problems, malnutrition, forced working, notably in the 1930s during the construction of the railways through Congo Ocean, the, the, the colonization of Ubangi Chari is, without a doubt, one of the most violent that has known the African continent. After the Second World War, a priest originating from the south of the country, Barthélemy Boganda becomes a principal political man of Fubangichari. He is elected deputy at the French National Assembly in 1946, then mayor of Bangui ten years later. And he becomes, in 1957, the first African president of the big council of the FEA. Boganda then suggests the formation of a big independent state of Central Africa which would unite the four territories of the FEA. He goes even further in his federalist and anti-colonial thesis by calling to the creation of the United States of Latin Africa, a federation of states grouping possessions of France, Belgium, Spain and Portugal of the region. With the decolonization and advances, the idea is to create a strong state 
a powerful and independent market capable of counterbalancing the British influence at the south and, an, and at the north that of Nasser, Egypt, then near to the USSR. And of course the project of Buganda is heard by numerous political managers and definitely takes end at his death in 1959 in a plane crash at the south of Bangui. One year later, the 13th of August in 1960, the CAR proclaims its independence and David Daco, with the support of Paris, becomes the first president of the country. Follows a long period of instability and of state strikes guided to the, to the regard of the Chadian neighbor to the French political authorities in, in Paris and to the French military which stayed in the country. So, to only take into account the changes of presidents, we still need to know that the 31st of December in 1965, a state strikes drive to power an ancient captain of the French army called Jean-Benel Pocassa. In 1972, Bokasa proclaims himself president for life, then emperor in 1977. During that, he puts in place an absolute concentration of power, monopolizes entire recipes of economy and deletes all personality that attempts to oppose him. In 1979, while Bokasa is at Tripoli, scholar revolts take place from the massacre of many studiers, Bokassa is sent out of charge with the help of the French military and the previous president, David Daco, comes, up, comes back to power. In 1981, a new military state strikes being brings the general André Colimba in the head of the country. Then, in 1993, Ange-Félix Patassé, the previous prime minister of Bokassa, is elected president. During the 10 years of his mandate, the country experiences three mutinies, four attempts of state strikes, which sometimes lead to the intervention of the French army. And just like his predecessor, he reveals private interests and public stations, and even creates his own company of exploitation of diamonds. In 2003, new state strikes. Jean-Félix Patassé is pulled down by his chief of top management, the general Fran François Bozizé, which is elected president of the Republic in 2005, function which he still occupies today. We can measure it by this brief summary. Political instability, corruption, the CIR is in the incapacity to guarantee the security of its people. On the road, the population is confronted to those we call the road cutters, those armed gangs, often composed of demobilized warriors, do not have political claims. They practice theft, hostage taking, or murder, in the only goal to ensure their subsistence. And if we stack on the zones of violence identified by the UN in January 2012, we see that road cutters aren't the only ones who implied. Many political military groups fight in the country for ethnic and political reasons and for the control of the resources, for example, the diamond mines. Because of the internal instability, we must add to the regional instabilities conflicts in Chad, in the region of Darfur, partitions of South Sudan, tensions in Congo, Kinshasa. All of those regional elements make it that the country often was used as a fallback for the armed movements coming from the neighbors. Today, the east of the country suffers from the exactions of the Sagna Resistance Army, a movement of rebellion originating from Uganda. Look at this map. The Sagna Resistance Army was born in 1987 in northern Uganda. Its founder, Joseph Connie, wants to pull down the power in place and create a state founded on the Ten Commands of the Bible. 
For more than ten years, the militias of Connie make the terror reign. Massacre, thief, the amputation of the hands, the ears, or the lips. Its army also practices kidnapping of children in the large scale. Boys and girls are stolen and constrained at the risk of dying to commit the worst exactions and the girls are subjected to, yes, sexual slavery. After many campaigns, the Ugandan army was able to push the fighters out of its borders. The SRA installs in what we call today South Sudan and the DRC. In 2005, the International Penal Court of AL throws an arrest warrant opposing Joseph Connie and four of his lieutenants, lieutenants. And despite a logistical help of the USA, Connie was able to escape. From 2008, the SRA intensifies its attacks and leads them to the CIR. A website, LRA tra Crisis Tracker, constantly collects data coming from the HCR or from diverse NGOs present on the terrain. Here you can see one of their interactive maps. It is very useful as it shows the zones affected by the exactions. And here, the localizations since 2009. So how are we today? February 2012, a video published on the internet accuses the massacre of the SRA and in one month it has been watched by over 100 million use internet users. The 23rd of March, so one month later, the African Union announces the spread of a multinational force of 5,000 men composed of Ugandan, South Sudanese, Congolese, and Central African warriors. The ambition seems clear, but it is delicate when we know that children soldiers form a big part of the army of Joseph Kony. In the level of a country, to all of those violences, either from international movements or external to the country, follow the movements of the population. In 2011, the Bureau of Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs of the UN have noticed 95,000 internal travels and nearly 153,000 having escaped to the neighbors. We have been alerted to the dramatical situation in this country on the plan of sanitary and deficit of human security. By this report from, from the Médecins Sans Frontières that was published in, nev in November 2011, CIR Silent Crisis, you can read it by downloading it. So the below the maps is little carried on in Doom Watch, yet here is found united in the same country, corruption, malnutrition, hard children, mortality, malaria, tuberculosis, HIV, so the CIR of today is still far from what we could dream of in the 1950s. The priest, the priest, Bartholomew Puganda. Alors vous pouvez télécharger à partir d'internet le rapport République centrafricaine, la crise silencieuse, ce rapport préparé par Médecins sans frontières. Et puis tout un dossier photographique autour du thème « L'Afrique en face » vient de paraître dans la revue de photos « Six mois, le XXIe siècle » en images. And that's a freaking game. Uh, firstly, if you if you were such a a boss to get so high in this video, then congrats because you you'll be most likely to be the only one. Uh, <laughs> I don't expect much people to <laughs> to to get up to here in this video. Uh, but anyways, and congrats. Uh, 
uh, as we can see, there isn't much that has changed in like eight days. Uh, Void Viper has won. Uh, uh, well, that's too big. Has won five points, and uh, 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 also, if you want to know how what it consists of, obviously click the link. Behind uh, to just know what it is if you're curious, and uh, and also there is those two guys in plus, and that is all that has changed in eight days. Nothing much really. Um, I wanted to say that it, uh, as you can see, the list is getting really long, and that. It is uselessly long, as you can see. Like there are a lot there uh, that that are just at point thirty points, and that, and that don't get higher. Uh, and I believe it is kind of useless to show everyone when it's, uh, you have to admit not everyone is going to care about the game, and that is and that is respectable. And so. Uh, what I suggest is that every video I remove point thirty points to everyone, so that those with that end up with zero points are excluded from the game. So, for example, all of those who have three points and only three points for, uh, after uh, ten games, they will end up getting out, and so we'll only have the ones who actually truly play to get to to there. Uh, that's just a suggestion. Tell me in the comments uh, if you're such a pro th that you got up to here in this video, then just talk, tell me in the comments by telling me if yes or no this is a good idea to remove point thirty points to everyone, and that those with zero points are just excluded then to get more space in the, the scores to get it more like centered to those in the first places that truly want to play there just a suggestion just tell me uh, do I have anything else to say nope then bye